Sophie met Bradley Cooper. I said I'm engaged, and he said, "Where's your fiance?" And I said, "He's downstairs." Yeah, she went nowhere. <laughs> I was like, "Ring." <laughs> <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> By the way, do I look like Gordon Ramsay? No, you really don't, because you have so much Botox, and he's got so many wrinkles. I have no Botox. That's unfair. I have no Botox. Have you done a poo in the sea? Yeah, I have done a poo in the sea. Oh. Yeah, but when I pooed, I broke it up with my hand. I'm shagging <laughs> the cake baker. Uh. Oh my god. No, that's really got to me. That one. <laughs> That's actually f***ing disgusting. It was actually worse. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go down to the river. It's the same, that's the song that you wrote. So I just wrote into my mom now, man. <laughs> what did you say? Every time I come back into the house at the moment, all I can hear is Taylor Swift or Dixie Chicks. Oh my God, Taylor Swift. Why have I never been a... I'm a Swifty. It makes sense because I love country music. Dixie Chicks. Yeah. The Chicks, and they're now called. And Taylor Swift's actually a country music song. Favourite Taylor Swift song? Give it to um, me. I can't think of any, but I could tell you a Dixie Chicks one. No, tell me a Taylor Swift one. You are mine. Oh my God, what's wrong with me? <laughs> you are mine. Um, yeah. Travelling Soldier. Oh my God, <laughs> the tune's just Bob gone. Marley, Travelling Buffalo, oh, so Buffalo Soldier, you mean? Um, Buffalo they, Soldier. Buffalo Soldier. You said Travelling Soldier. I'm moving on because honestly, I can't No, do a Dixie trick, honey. You were mine. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I don't want to, and I can't sing to save my soul. What is my talent? What is your talent? <laughs> what is your talent? Um, <laughs> what is your talent? <laughs> I'm really, I, I know a lot about um, facials and skin. <laughs> that is true. You're incredibly good at being a nutritionist. Food. Nutrition, yeah. Nutrition. Yeah. That's why I drink full fat coats in the morning. Good for the tummy. Lots of people thinking you're pregnant at the moment still because you, you're feeling nauseous. And we got a lot of comments about it. I have weird cravings too. Perfect. That's just adding up to the point. I keep eating Leardarm. E damn cheese. We go for this lovely dinner and we eat loads of food and we eat quite a lot when we go for dinner. We'll order like a steak tartare, again, vegan, a steak tartare and a tuna tartare. And then we'll order like one Dover sole to share. Like literally it's a strip of thing and it was quite plain and shit to be honest, unless you put the butter on it and I don't eat dairy. Again, not true, but anyway. And then Jamie will get so many fries for the side and like a cauliflower tree fat. cheese and then like some other like buttery thing. I won't eat those bits. I just eat, so I have half a tuna tartare and half a steak tartare and I go home and I'm like, I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't eat the other crap that you order. Like, order some veggies. No, no. He's like, no, nah, we don't need them. We'll get the truffle fries. I had, I had half a loaf of bread as well. This is our Valentine's Day meal. Again, can't eat wheat. I don't do that well, shit. Well, okay, I'm sorry. I'm fine. I, I, I get it, all right? We went to a very nice restaurant and, and... Stormzy was next to us. Stormzy was next to us. He bought his mum on a Valentine's Day. Do you think we'll be allowed back into this members club after outing all of us? Sophie met Bradley Cooper uh, in, in this bar. And Bradley Cooper walked up to her and then turned her... I said, I'm engaged. And he said, where's your fiancé? And I said, he's downstairs. Yeah, he... She went, nowhere. <laughs> I was like, ring. <laughs> <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> All of her friends were sitting around the table and I, you know, listen, hey, hey, I hold myself well. I, I'm not that jealous, whatever. But I was a, bit, a little bit like, Bradley Cooper's pretty... He's up there. Like, that's a hard thing. And all of her friends around the table, and she's telling story, and I was sitting there silently, and all of her friends went, turned to me and went, well, that is her type, Jamie. And I went... He is my, like, number one. And I went, okay. And they said, oh, if that was me, I would have, oh, <laughs> bitten off my finger. <laughs> I was like, what the hell is going on? And then his friend came up to Jamie and went, is this your fiancé? You're a lucky man. And Jamie went, what? What the hell? Sophie, what have you said to him? And then we had a fight. I was like, just be, be it's just, I've done nothing. I was that like, woohoo, it's the coolest thing ever. It was Bradley Cooper though. He then went to a casino and I went to Greek Street because we had a fight over that. Who's the jealous one, guys? You took a tuck-tuck all the way there. I did. Not my own. Did Bradley Cooper have a good I chat? I ran away. I got so nervous. I went bright red my whole body. I'm not I'm not that nervous person. Can we also just remind all I didn't. I was waiting in the queue to go to the loo, by the way, and I was so desperate. I didn't even go to the loo because I was like, have to go, have to go. Can we also just My remind... chat was shocking. Can we just like that matters. Like, can I <laughs> like <laughs> that matters? I do replay it in my head sometimes. I'm like, why did I was so lame? I was like, oh no, I'm engaged. Like, I could have just been engaged. like... Sorry that you told the truth. I could have just been like, it's an open relationship. It's and not. when he turned it around, I could have just been like, yeah. And then what? Gonna shagged him in the loo? Like, what on wow. earth? 
No, what do you mean? It would mean? have been the story to tell. No, I'm joking. It, it's like, it's like, can we all remind the listeners that when Sophie and I were on a flight together, we're on a flight, I had my headphones on, I was watching the screen in front of me, I was watching a movie, I suddenly get a tap on my shoulder, boom, like jogged me. In the middle of the day, I turned to her, Sophie's got her headphones off, she's looking straight at me, and she says, dead in my eyes, she says, the things I'd let Bradley Cooper do to me. No, no, and, I, they said the and, things I'd do to Brad, Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, but it was Bradley Cooper. It was Brad Pitt, I remember distinctly. Oh, whatever, it's all Brad. But Brad's. those who are up there, they're friends as well. What, you're going to have a threesome with them? Maybe. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Should we kick off this yeah. dumbass podcast? Let's kick off this dumbass podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to Nilly Wes Podcast. Hello everyone, welcome back to Nilly Wes Podcast. I'm Sophia Boo and this is Jamie Lang. Oosh, 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 oosh. You look strange. We had an inter- by the way, do I look like Gordon Ramsay? No, you really don't because you have so much Botox and he's got so many wrinkles. I have no Botox, that's unfair, I have no Botox. But we did have a funny experience, didn't we? We had a funny experience. Um, we were coming uh, out of another place the other night and I got called over, hey you, hey you, pointing at me. And they thought... I was Gordon Ramsay. But the funny thing is, Jamie went along with it. He was like, yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm Gordon Ramsay. Take a photo. All these girls were going, oh, we got a photo of Gordon Ramsay. And I was going, he's Jamie Lang. They were like, who? I don't know why. I didn't say I was my real one. I went along with the fact that I was Gordon Ramsay. Anything to be more famous. It's not anything to be more famous. I didn't want to let them down. I also wonder, like, they were so young. It's mad to me that they knew who Gordon Ramsay was, but not who you were. Because Gordon Ramsay is very famous. But they were so young. Like, I don't even really watch Gordon Ramsay. What's he? Hell in the Kitchen. <laughs> yeah. Hell's Kitchen. How's, he does Hell's Kitchen. He does lots of different things. Do you know Gordon Ramsay? I've met him a few times. Nice guy. Very lovely guy. Came up to me the other day in a restaurant, shook my hand, tapped me on the shoulder. Well, that's And said, funny. hello, big boy. He did not say hello, he, big boy. He did. He said, hello, big boy. On that note, Jamie, again, with the road rage, we just were driving here on his stupid little moped. <laughs> on that note with the road rage. And this guy whizzes through and he was a tiny little man in a tiny little car. And Jamie went, you're right, big boy. I was like, what is going on? Are you from the ghetto? <laughs> I just went, Jamie, please move on. I don't think anyone in the ghetto said, you're right, big boy. <laughs> well, who's, what lingo's at? You're right, big boy. He had his windows up anyway. You think he's going to hear you? Like, no. We had Valentine's Day last week and I want to um, ask something. I'm a little bit needy. I mean, we know this, I'm a little bit needy. I like kind of romantic things. That's what I like. Sophie is very much the opposite. You don't, I... Every year, get Sophie flowers, and every year you... I tell you that I don't like flowers, they're messy. <laughs> she doesn't like... They dry, and they flake on my floor, and they hurt my fingers when I put them in a vase. Where are the flowers at the moment? I didn't they're see in them. a vase, but like the mess I get together, hoover out to hoover up all the leaves, yeah, but water that's... everywhere, splish, splash, splosh. But I think it's quite nice. But why don't you listen and think she doesn't like flowers, and so maybe I just get her a bar of... Lear damn cheese or something or full fat coat. <laughs> you want me to get those? Oh, do you know what I like? A card with some lovely words. I, I got you a card. You got me a post-it note. I, I wrote on a post-it note. You to... wrote happy Valentine's Day lamb. I love you. You're awesome. Which was very sweet, but it wasn't a card. It was the loveliest card. I wrote a post-it note and put it on the table and it was... I stuck it on the mirror. But then you, so you've got me a Valentine's Day card and before I even open it, you go, oh, it's not very good. And I was because like... Because Jamie's like almost crying at the Valentine's Day card and I wanted you to know, like, I've not written like some soppy love letter in there. Like, But why wouldn't you write some soppy love well, letter? Well, I just didn't want you to like open it and be disappointed, but it was a lovely words in there. And I got you some chocolates. And you got me some chocolates. And I tidied the flat. Spick, splash, splosh. And you tidied the flat, which is amazing. But I feel like, you know... And I bought you a lasagna. What happened was I came back to the flat. So he said, oh, I've got you a card. It's not very nice. And I was like, oh, okay, fine. So I opened the card. No, I didn't. No, you, what happened was you were, oh my God, let me, you got me a card. And I was like, well, it's not that like romantic. Don't worry. Because I know he likes like soppy things. So I just wanted to pre-warn you. Okay. You pre-warned me that. You then said, I've got you some chocolate as well. They're going to make you shit. <laughs> I went, brilliant. And then I opened the fridge and said, what's this? And held up a Tupperware of mints. And he went, it wasn't mints. It was a full lasagna. <laughs> yeah, I lasagna and said, oh, I was going to I made you lasagna, but then I couldn't really be bothered. No, no, <laughs> I was, like, I was going to pretend I made you one. So you bought Please lasagna. don't judge me, but our oven's broken. If you follow me, you know. <laughs> so I actually was going to do it. And then I was like, I'll get him one of delivery. Got it. And then I couldn't find the like the tray to put it in. And I was like, oh, fuck this. I 
So I shoved it in the fridge. <laughs> shoved it in the fridge. And then I came down this morning, it's in the bin. <laughs> yeah, because it's gross. I, I went in to have a little bite and it was like congealed. I was like, oof. <laughs> when did you have a little bite last night? No, this morning. For breakfast. <laughs> I just wanted to try it. I also had your fresh fitness food. There's nothing in the fridge. I'm being very... You ate my fresh fitness food chicken again. chicken balls. Sophie, then... That's the only one I like. <laughs> you can't eat my fitness food. But that food. was just from yesterday because we had dinner. I thought it was your dinner. Came back from uh, a night out and what I had to eat, I had to go and get a baguette, which was stale because that's the only thing we had. I then went into the fridge and there was brie... Again, the cheese craving. I don't know what's going on. Why are the cheese? We've never had cheese. I can't eat dairy or I gluten. Did, I never like cheese. I just got a new taste for it. Because <laughs> you're pregnant. I'm not. <laughs> you, you are, you're pregnant. Just stop saying that. Okay, you're not pregnant. I put on my baguette peanut butter. How she makes me squirm. It actually makes me squirm. The amount you ate. No, guys, peanut butter, brie. And what was the other thing you did? Hummus or something. A little bit of hummus on there, yeah. No, what, what was it? I think it was a little bit of hummus. Oh, yeah, well. <laughs> Peanut butter and brie. Just no, that's just not a thing on stale. And he was gobbling, <laughs> gobbling it down. Then he got to bed and he was like... <sighs> <laughs> Two of the rankest things I think I've ever seen in my life. One, there was a, I was just joined my school. I must have been eight, nine years old at boarding school. And there was a guy sitting in front of me and... He, we're in the maths lesson and he went with his hand down his pants uh, and picked out and then just had shit on his hand and he wiped it underneath his desk. <laughs> Honestly upsets me if I think about it too much. Oh my God, and the other one, guy. the other one that upsets me is my friend Nick, who was at school, had like real like sniffles all the time. Like you have oh at the moment, you're, you're like, yeah, hey, I, I'm going to look back and hate my life here. He had all the sniffles and we were driving to Normandy in a school bus and I went, Nick, stop sniffing at oh him. God. And he looked at me, he blew his nose in his hand, he then showed it to me and it looked like he had crushed a, tur a ninja turtle. <laughs> like it was honestly like that. And then he went, oh, and sucked it. Up. Oh my God. No, that's really got to me, that one. <coughs> that's actually fucking disgusting. It was actually the worst thing ever. That will stick with me. I'll, I'll have flashbacks of that image. Nick. It was one of the most upsetting things. That is ever. really upsetting. I think it's the most crazy thing. Anyways, my friend told me uh, the worst Valentine's Day date she'd ever had. She went this guy on a dating app and they were having like a uh, lovely dinner together. And she's like, oh my God, this is like the greatest dinner ever. Like, it's so amazing, so fascinating. Like, I just, this guy's really good. They'd order a bottle of wine. They're having the best time. She said, I'm just going to go to the bathroom. He's like, you go to the bathroom. They're flirting. She's like, oh my God, this is just fantastic. She went to the bathroom and she was doing her hair in the mirror and suddenly her phone vibrated. And she was like, oh, what the hell? She picked it up and it was a message from the, her date at, on the table. Pinky. She read it. She was like, oh my God. She came back to the table and the guy's, the guy's head was in his hands. And he went, I think I sent you a message. Oh no. She said, yes, he did. And the message read, yes, mate, having a great time, bottle of wine down, think I'm going to shag her in the bum tonight. <gasps> No, boys are fucking gross. Oh my god! Oh, my. Did she stay? She stayed. Did they do it in the bar? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't ask her. You definitely did. No, I did not ask her. God, that's brave of her to stay. I'd be like, I am out. Uh, also, can you? I was just walking down the street, and Jamie sent me a horrible photo of me with my face all mushed up. No, I these did. TikTok tricks. Like, I don't even have TikTok. What I do? Follow me. <laughs> I'm gonna be really posting loads imminently i tag you in all of my tiktok videos and you never post anything you've got like 30 odd thousand followers yeah damn right bitches <laughs> you never post anything hey do you know what time we think it should be for now <laughs> do you know what time we think it is do you know what time it is Sophie? i think it's time for listeners oh mischief. i think it's time for listeners messages <laughs> oh say that one more time girl it's time for listeners messages so you get oh, it I on up Get it on up. Get on that saddle and ride Get up. on, cowboy. Okay, cowgirl. Okay, I think we start now. Okay, clip your heels together. Let's go. Clip your heels together and let's go. Okay, it's time for listen messages. What? We're like, turning into like some weird ass and all that stuff. Okay. Um, hello, everyone. Welcome to the listeners' messages part. Um, we want to say a big thank you for everyone once again for sending in all of your messages. Um, we check them all the time. Uh, we have all of the team just going through them and they're just so wonderful and amazing. Um, and I thought I'd kick one off with just a really lovely proposal story, Soph. Gorgeous. From Simran Kumar, who says, Hi, Jamie and Sophie. I got engaged over the weekend and my proposal setup was actually inspired by Jamie's. 
When you guys got engaged, which is a year ago now, I absolutely loved everything, especially how intimate it was. And I told my boyfriend and he remembered all this time. It was a dream and I still feel like I'm dreaming. Anyway, love the pod and good luck with all of the wedding plans. Can't wait to see everything. Lots of love and happiness to you both. Oh, that's so sweet. That is amazing. That's so sweet. She still feels like she's dreaming. Do you remember? It quickly ends. I'm joking. (laughs) It doesn't. It doesn't. It's such a lovely time. Do you remember our proposal? I do. It really, it really is actually the most special time. It ever. was amazing. Do you remember when we put? I put all the notes in a row. <gasps> oh, yeah, it was. So and said all those. What was the song? Okay, we've got another one. Listeners' messages about people having secretly having sex. Oh, it's anonymous though, guys. Oh, but yeah, so they're secretly having sex. and They want to be anonymous, so. Hello, Jamie and Sophie. Firstly, congratulations to you both. I wanted to share a story about a couple I met at my cousin's wedding. My sister and I were meandering around the wedding outside the venue, meeting random people after a good deal of wine. And we met a man who introduced himself simply with no name. I'm shagging the cake baker. We greeted the baker shagger and continued our evening with a, li- with a little giggle, not thinking much of it. Weeks later, all of the photos from the photo booth, which was a little curtained room, come out on Facebook for everyone to see. Idly browsing through all of the images, I see the cake baker herself. As my eyes adjust, I realise the cake baker is in fact being bent over by the shagger, looking like she's having the ride of her life in full view of the camera and now everyone with access to the couple's Facebook gallery. <gasps> The Baker Shagger. That the anonymous Baker Shagger. So good. <laughs> the anonymous Baker Shagger. My friend told me a story that she, <laughs> that she my friend had sex with the sandwich maker in Pratt and she didn't know his name and called him the sandwich maker. Wow, wow. And when they had sex, he didn't take off his jacket. <laughs> <laughs> he wore his anorak the whole way through. That is crazy. Imagine if you had sex with like a one night stand and the boy didn't take off his like, jacket. How did she meet the prayer man? Did she ask for a sandwich? Right? That got you. Oh my God, it got me so good. Okay, you ready for the next list as measure safe? I am. Okay, because it's unexpected item in the sea. We know what this means, right? <clears throat> Please keep anonymous. Hi, Jamie and Sophie. I have a delightful poo story to share with you both. Whilst on holiday in Greece, my friends and I went on a boat trip, more like a booze cruise. <laughs> and at around halfway through the day, there was a pit stop. Everyone gathered the opportunity to swim and jump into the sea. Whilst on said boat, we made friends with a group of boys around us who then kindly offered to look after our belongings whilst we went for a sea dip. All is going well. Abba blasting, swimming in the open water, sun beating down on us. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see the boys frantically waving and shouting in the distance. However, because the music was so loud, I couldn't quite hear what they were saying. That was until I swam a little closer and realised... Oh no. They were shouting, Poo! Poo! <laughs> Okay, a little immature that seems, but whatever floats your boat. Well, it appears there was a floaty right next to me. Oh, I got a floaty. I looked to my right and there was a humongous human turd making its way towards me with each wave. I think I must have set a new world record for the fastest 50 metre swim to escape the poo infested water. Clearly someone had taken the opportunity to release their bowels at my peril and I will forever be in debt to that group of boys for saving me from a giant floating turd. Love the podcast. Lots of love. Oh my God. There's so many people who poo in the sea. I just can't imagine it. Have you done a poo in the sea? Yeah, I have done a poo in the sea. Oh. Yeah, but when I pooed, I broke it up with my hand. Oh no. It just gets worse and worse. I did. I used like a propeller. Oh my gosh. What an image. (laughs) Okay, I've got one for Becky Jarvis. This is, this is about why full fat coke works. Hi guys, love the podcast. Just wanted to chime in about Sophie's full fat coke trick for nausea. My grand for years has always given us this tip and it's been passed on through the family. She's She always would make herself a glass of coke, let it go flat, sip it whenever she felt sick. I googled it and apparently it helps settle the stomach with its slight fizz and replenish fluids and glucose lost by vomiting and diarrhea. Keep being you guys love Becky from Clitheroe in Lancashire, pronounced Clitheroe, not Clit Hero, as people like to say. <laughs> Thank you, Becky from Clitheroe, not Clit Hero. There we go. Uh, I'm sipping on my full fat coat. <laughs> oh my god. 
Um, speaking of uh, snot and things like that, I have a... Oh, God, you're getting so self-conscious. You know, it's not. It's just this, my friend did it in his hand and, you know, we got a listener's message about it. This is from Matab. During my formative school years, I woke up and was really ill. My mother, being my mother, insisted I was well enough to go to school. So off I went, coughing and sniffing the whole day, but controlling it as much as possible. It gets to lunch break, my friends and I sit on the field, enjoying the sunshine and a good chat. A boy that I was flirting back and forth with in my ear comes and sits down next to me. I knew that sexual chemistry was building between us and we're close to acting upon it. So we're all chatting as a group and him and I are having a little side conversations here and there. It's going really well when all of a sudden I have an urge to sneeze. Oh no. The sneeze came so suddenly and violently (laughs) that my brain did not allow my body to react. (laughs) I know exactly what's happening. I know exactly the feeling. Actually, you're just like... (laughs) (laughs) And before I knew it, I felt a release of pressure from my nose, which felt great. I quickly realised was that the release was not due to the large snot slug-like thing that flew out of my nose and now was on my trousers. The look around to see everyone noticed so I could attempt to discreetly clean it. I looked to my left and my soon-to-be lover's gaze was locked onto my snot slug. <laughs> ah, and then he looked at me, his mouth open. At this point, the group turned towards me after hearing my sneeze. They all clock his facial expression and ask what's wrong. I shake my head towards Smith to say, please don't tell anyone about my snot slug. Oh. And in the moment, he understood and reassured everyone it was nothing. But safe to say, our sexual desire towards each other was never explored. Why is she calling it a snot slug? Have you ever done that? Where it literally... No, I haven't. But the, it is so awful when people just have like a bogey or something. Or when people just go swimming and they come out of the water and like there's... Oh, and you're like, ah! Like, it's the worst feeling. It's the worst or thing when ever. they have a whistly nose and it's like going... Oh, no, 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 no. no. <sighs> Okay, so we've got one from Kate Marshall. Okay. I was in bed naked and both my fiancé and his brother started having a drunken brawl, full fist fight and everything on top of the bed while I was sat there in the full nude. I was trying to get out of the bed and away from the fight, I got caught in the face by an elbow. At which point their mum their mam came in and here I am stood meeting his mum. We weren't even officially BF and GF at the time in the full frontal nude. I grabbed the first thing I saw, which happened to be a gilet and put it on. So I literally stood there in a gilet. You're naked wearing a gilet. Yeah, vaginas out and all. So I literally stood there in a gilet with my boobs popping out the sides and my nun still in full view. Then his bro- little brother comes out of his room and all his girlfriends and I stood there like, hi, nice to meet you. Oh my God, I also just remembered that I had a bruised nun, nun, a bruised nun at the time and I had my first ever bikini waxing ready for the occasion and the beautician had literally butchered my vagina. Oh my God. Have you ever been caught naked by anyone? Oh yeah, Chrissy's oh, dad. This is actually genius. Tell the story. This is amazing. So um, we just moved into our new house. At university, right? At university. And we were all coming up on the same day but everyone was getting there at different times. Anyway, I got up, I'd unpacked my mum had dropped me off or I drove up or whatever. I'd unpacked. I was having a shower. I knew Chrissy was going to be the next person to come in. I had the door unlocked and I came out the shower and I went at the top of the stairs, woo, naked. And it was her dad. And I was like, oh my God. And then I just hid upstairs when my bedroom was downstairs. And I just had to hide upstairs until he'd gone. It was, I've never seen him since. So that that was interesting. <laughs> At the top of the stairs, the sight he must have got, he shaking was, my boobies in front of him. He it. obviously ran up and went, don't distract me! <laughs> I need to keep the image. No, 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 Jamie. Do you know what? Because the listener's message is so good, we have uh, another one that I want to read out, which is good, from Jamie. Emma, who says, I've got a story about butt plugs. <laughs> to go with your recent theme, because we spoke about butt plugs on that last one. My cousin was training to be a trauma nurse in the high-pressure department of A&E. They saw all sorts come through the door, and one of them was someone in crazy amounts of pain and embarrassment. It was something to do with their ass. This person was whisked off to X-ray, and my cousin as a trainee was invited to see what they found. Most people thought, what the hell? But my cousin, the millennial that she is, knew that the butt plug in question was actually a Buzz Lightyear, (gasps) which had been inserted, and then his wings came out. Oh my God, ouch, 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 ouch. They put a Buzz Lightyear Why would they do that? That? The wings coming out would have been a real shock. That would have been a fright. You'd have been like, whoa, whoa, what just happened there? 
<laughs> didn't what? expect that. <laughs> That's awful. But being a Buzz Lightyear. But why? I don't know, honey, because people are just adventurous. It's what they like to do. Kinky. People put hamsters up their bum. No, 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 they no. They do. No, 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 they no. do. People put hamsters up their bum. People put seals up their vaginas. I think this seals? is... Seals? Oh, no, eels. <laughs> I think this is taking... It's like really downgrading our podcast. We shouldn't talk about it anymore. Now, what we like to do um, every time is invite someone into the studio to say a big thank you for proposing the pod. And in the studio today, we have Dominica, who is sitting there, over there. She's a bit overwhelmed, as you can imagine, because she's been bundled into the podcast studio. Sophie and I going, hey, 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 hand us sweets, all those different things. So we want to say a big thank you, though, for coming in today and proposing your pod. Um, Thank you, Dominica. Yeah, it's amazing, and hopefully you had a great time. And just a big thank you to every single person who keeps proposing the pod. We're going to keep doing this thing where we're inviting everyone into the studio to have a fun time to see the experience. And we also have our jingle for the pros of the pod. You ready for the surf? Hi, Jamie and Sophie. Hi, so we're Naomi and Hannah. We, we are twins and we listen to your podcast every week. It really makes us giggle, so thanks so much. And um, we thought we'd give you a little a jingle for your propose the pod. We hope you like it. Propose, propose, propose the pod. Propose, propose the pod. Love you now. That oh, is fantastic. Beautiful voices. We should just try and reenact that. Really. So hold on. So yeah, we have to go in harmony, though, honey. Okay. So okay, we're going to try and do this. I'll ready? go uh, low. You're yeah. going to go low. I'll go high. Okay. Th- okay. Fine. You go high. I'll go low. Three, two. Propose the pose. Propose the part. Propose the part. Propose the part. I think we nailed it. <laughs> Okay, this week on Propose the Pod, we have um, a lovely message from me on Instagram who says, Propose the Pod. Hey, Sophie and Jamie, thought I'd share this with you. I was just queuing in McDonald's drive through and I was listening to your podcast. And as soon as the woman was about to say, hello, can I take your order? Jamie in the podcast goes, right, let's talk about butt plugs and anal beads. <laughs> it's always you doing that. And the woman before she could say anything was like, uh, mm, no, thank you. Can I take your order, please? And I had to profusely apologise, explain I was listening to Nilly Wed's podcast. Oh my God, it's always you. It's not inappropriate always. little man. I'm not inappropriate at all, honey. It's not my fault. These are the messages that we get sent through. All right, we want to say a huge thank you to every single person who keeps sending in listeners' messages. It means the absolute world we to us. We love them. We love them so much. Please keep sending them in, sending them in to our Instagram, proposing the pod, the tunes, um, the messages at Nilly Wed's podcast, or you can send us an email, contact at Nilly Wed's podcast.com so that's the end of listeners messages my stag do is being organized as we speak i'm very excited for it we are going it's very soon yeah honey i know we this is our wedding update we are going skiing i'm scared 15 lads 15 the, 15 boys in the slopes come on come at me if you don't wear Put a your helmet bazookas up I'm not going to wear a helmat. No, wear, no, that's so stupid. I'm not going to wear clothes. I'm not going to wear freaking anything. Don't wear clothes, but wear a helmet. If you don't wear a helmet, I'll divorce you. I'm not going to wear a helmet. I'm not going to wear anything. I'm a free spirit girl. Try if you and... don't wear a helmet, you're literally so stupid. Do you know what I'm like? I'll tell you what I'm like. Go to the new forest and try and grab one of those horses. I'm a wild horse. Grab me. We went to the new forest. There aren't any horses. There, <laughs> there are. There are loads of horses in the you're new forest. Not, you're wearing a helmet. That's the end of it. I'm not wearing anything, honey. Oh, All <laughs> of you will be wearing helmets. I need updates. Jack, the producer, went skiing and he wasn't wearing a helmet and I got very cross and then he wore a helmet. I'm not going to wear a helmet. I'm not going to wear a ski No, you're no, stupid. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen on my stag. This is so, guys, I'm so excited with, with the stag is being organised. You're not even going for the full thing. I He's am. a pussy and only doing like half the time. <laughs> He's gonna. I, he also, I reckon he'll do one day and then he'll get the fear and fly home. What are you talking about? That's not me. Guarantee. Are, are you joking? I'm. A, I'm a fucking. I'm a, the party king. That's what they call me, party yeah, king. Party they, king. Honestly, I, move out the way. The party kings. As, as the plane is landing in Geneva, I'm gonna hear. Where you going, Valdez? Yeah, but that you fly into Geneva. F- flock of girls gonna come. Yeah, out probably because you're the party king. Yeah, because the party king's here. No way to hit him. Uh, up. Do you know? I, I, do you do on you, the dates too, ladies. Yeah. Do you know? Do you know? I probably need three poles. Do you know why I need three poles? Two to ski on and one to bat away all the people coming after me. Get out of here. Is this gonna happen? And are you, you gonna wear like a costume? As we land, are you gonna wear a groom? Yeah, I'll probably, stag. Oh, you should wear like a stag. I'll probably. Do you know what I have on my back? I'll probably have Lango on my back. 
It's what they used to call me at school. Lango. <laughs> yeah, it's like, Lang- your name's Lang. Yeah, I know, but they call me Lango. So from get go, you just let people call you the wrong no, name. No, my nickname at school was Lango or Chief. Chief, because you're a chief. <laughs> no, because but in the like cool chief way. is in your loser chief. <laughs> no, I was like, I was like chief isn't like a cool. Hey, chief, what's happening, chief? Like that. That's what used to happen. He's scammy. Anyway, as the plane lands, you know what's going to happen? You're going to hear... A rag carpet's going to come out. No. Jamie. Yeah, Jamie. you're going to hear... And, and, and all, Lions. Everyone, er, no, just noise. And everyone on the flight's going to go, what's that? And I go, you just wait. And then as we go up the mountain towards Geneva, it's going to get louder. Party king. Party king. Well, there's this you losing your mind and hearing voices in your head. <laughs> no, it's not. It's going to be... What's going to be... Like, party. And they'll oh lay my down. god, this is a long-winded story, isn't it? It's not a long-winded story. It's all going to get cut out. It's not going to get cut out, it's just true. Do you know what else happened to me in Valdezzo once? Oh boy, you're going to tell us. Yeah, so someone tried to impress me. We're in Dick's Tea Bar, which is a... I know the one. Okay, you know the one, Dick's Tea Bar. And some guy came in on a saxophone. He was going... This saxophone. And I was like, hey, this guy's cool. I was really drunk. And he said, hey buddy, why don't you put this Sambuca shot that I had lit into his little saxophone. So I went, okay, cool. And I put it in and he went, <laughs> it was like a flamethrower. And it went all over him and he had to stop dropping. No. <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> he, honestly had to, he honestly had to stop stuff and roll. And I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. So I just looked at him and walked off. <laughs> no, you didn't leave him. What do you think I could Leave do? him for di- no, death. No, he didn't. He just blew flames all over him then he dropped to the ground was rolling on the ground I was like this is weird what, to get on the floor to stamp out the flames and you just went bye Felicia <laughs> yeah didn't even say bye I just was like this is a bit weird and walked off anyway we're doing the stag do I'm so excited it's I'm all... so nervous what What are you nervous for I'm just nervous about the helmet situation like that's my only worry like I don't want anyone losing helmets or breaking a leg I, all jokes aside I will be wearing a helmet good okay but you know I just it's gonna be so if it's gonna be crazy It's. Gonna, I just think people are some some good men might not come back. <laughs> you know, we may lose some good oh, men. Oh God, I'm just get on with it. What, what are we talking get about on with it. I'm just going I've on. heard about your stag for half an hour. You've yap, yap, yap to my ear. I'm just saying, we may lose some good men and that's what happens. On, oh good, I hope one of them is you. Now get on with the next part. <laughs> Sorry, well tell me about your hen then that you're going on. It's in oh. Paris. Bonjour. <laughs> Gonna meet some lovely French men. <laughs> Why are you obsessed with meeting new people? Tony, so, can you get on with the next part of the thing? Why this is got, it. Oh, the next part's this. This oh, is right. the wedding okay, I'll part. I'll dig in deep. Okay, go on, honey. So I don't know much because my sister's keeping it very SIA. Is that top secret? MIA? SIA. SIA? What is it, Emily? MI. She's keeping it top secret and you say a word for that. Emily's like, going on the... the Emily hand. is coming. Emily, our social media secret. guru, is, is on. Emily Champion. So essentially, I'm getting told the day before what we're doing and she's going to tell me what to pack. But I also know the themes because I was like, mate, I need to get my outfits ready. So it's Space Cowgirl is one of the themes. And then the other one's Pretty in Pink. Space Cowgirl. Clouds? <laughs> This sounds, hey, this sounds wicked. No, wait, I don't want people to... I want, wow, I, want, I can't wait. Well, anyway, we're booked to go to loads of restaurants. I don't know the itinerary, but it sounds really lovely. And we're going on the Eurostar and there's loads of lovely people going in. Woohoo! So let me get this straight. You're going to Paris. I wear white all weekend. Um, you're going to go to Paris. You're going to dress as a cloud and go to restaurants. I don't know what the cloud is. That's upsetting me. I don't think I approve of that one. Do you know what else exciting happened, which I'm really, really excited about, is I went to have my suit fitted for our wedding. I went with my best woman, Georgie, who's been on the podcast. Uh, We went to uh, a place called Tom Sweeney. You walk in there and they measure you up. They do all these different things. They ask if you want double-breasted, if they want a pleat thing on your top. We're doing black tie for the wedding. Yeah. I pick my shirt. I pick my trousers. I pick my shoes. I pick it, whether... I'm going to get one of those waistbands. Wait, I have one a question. One of those waistbands going around. I'm getting one of those. Like a prince. And then they are, then I was doing my actual wedding in the UK outfit. He was like, what colour do you want? What grade? What cotton? What, like, cloth? Gorgeous. Do you want inside? Do you want outside? Do you want satin here? I was like, this is insane. Ooh. I was really excited. I wish I'd have come to that. Is that not allowed? I had my um, UK wedding dress this week too. Tell me about it, honey. We can't really tell you much about it, but I love it. It's really nice. So many things on the horizon. So we've got a lot 
going on and I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited. A little bit stressed, but I'm also super excited. We've changed our game for the moment, Soph. Mm. Um, We've had uh, Reverse Mr. and Mrs. We've had Wed You Rather. The one that we're doing at the moment is Mm. their perfect marriage material, but... Yeah, hit me with it. The but this week... Yeah. You ready for it? Ready. Is they're the perfect man, the perfect person, but every single time they orgasm, they call out their ex's name. I would deal with it. You would deal with that? I would deal with it if they're a perfect guy and they were like, you know, I would deal so with it. So if I called out my ex's name, you'd be happy? I wouldn't like it, but like if you're the perfect guy, I could put up with that. If it was like a tick, you know? Well, so that, technically I could call out my ex's name because... You're the perfect guy. So you think you're all right with that? Would you be all right if I did it? No, not what, at all. What if if I was... you were orgasming and which is regular... <laughs> <laughs> You'd be constantly shouting out your ex's name. But wait, but well, what if I'm the perfect girl and then you have to have a less perfect girl, but she doesn't call out the name? No, I would suck I just, it up. I'd just put headphones in or play music real loud. Or I would just scream when you orgasm. Ah! That'd be fun. I don't think I could handle it. I don't think I could handle it. Well, I think I could. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. You were the perfect guy. So if our wedding favor for this week, are you ready for it? I'm ready. Oh my God, this one's a good one. We have audio guest book. Now, this is amazing. It's an old school phone that basically what you do is you put it on the table and people can pick it up and record a message to the bride and the groom or whoever's that. getting married. And so then you keep it forever as a voice message from all of your guests. That's wonderful. I really want to do that one. Yeah, but do you know what we're doing, which I thought was, we said the coolest idea is that we got our team coming out and they're going to be recording messages from all of our guests at the beginning and then at the end. The emeralds will be pretty messy. Oh my God. Do you know what I mean? And how good is that? That So people come in and then they have a great time and then at the end they can watch it all back. <laughs> all right, everybody. Listen, I want to say a big thank you to every single person once again who sent our messages and who have just keep listening to this podcast. It really does mean the world. Um, I would ask a big favor if you can click that subscribe button. So many of you aren't subscribed and listening to our podcast, and that's okay, but we would really love it if you do. We would love it if you did. And um, if you um, can write us any more messages and propose the pods, we want to hear from you at Nilly West Podcast or send us an email contact at nillywestpodcast.com. Hey, if you're getting married, go for it. If you're getting engaged, good luck. If you're thinking about getting engaged, you rock. And if you're single, you're epic. We love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. See you next Monday for another episode. Bye. Bye.